Hey everybody, Sarah, the Real Simple Mama here. I'm going to give you the 2021 tour of all of the plants that we have in with our chickens. Thanks so much for watching. This is gonna be a really quick crash course tour of me showing you all of the plants that first of all made it through the winter storm, hallelujah, but also that we have added this year because we've got some beauties and I'm so excited. So while my little chickens love to be the center of attention, this video is really gonna be more about the plants. And really quickly, I am in zone eight, so I'm in South Texas. These are plants that do really well. They're Texas superstars or they're gonna be really hardy for our climate but these are also plants that are not poisonous to chickens and they either provide a benefit if my chickens want to eat them or as you can see there are some plants that actually aren't protected and my chickens they just don't like them but these are plants that i feel in my experience with my little testers here that you can add in with your chicken run and they either provide a benefit for your flock or at least they can provide some beauty because your chickens aren't going to mess them up so here's what i do now i do have other videos that you can see i have a whole playlist called chickens and your garden where I talk about this harmony between flora and fauna and you can get an idea of why I put plant cages around them for a while and why, why there's big stupid landscaping pavers and bricks around some of my other babies. So some of these plants that you'll see have actually been here since 2020 when we moved in. Others are ones we just added. So I'll start at the fence and we'll go around. So the first plant that you're looking at and I've got three of them in here plus a hanging basket is called a bougainvillea right here. One two and three they will be climbers as you can see right there and the chickens have pecked at them a little bit just to kind of be destructive little jerks but they won't eat the bougainvillea now a couple things to be aware of with bougainvillea they are gorgeous they come in a whole bunch of different pinks reds lavenders and purples number one they have thorns and so on the new growth the thorns will be a little bit more bendable they won't be as hard but on the more established branches you need to be careful about that so that's why mine start in a pot that's about a foot and a half off the ground and then they go upwards the other thing is in my experience bougainvilleas love to be ignored <laughs> they're kind of masochistic they kind of like it when you abuse them and you forget to water them they will actually bloom more profusely and they have a double bloom so you have the the red there, sorry for the finger. See the tiny little white bloom in there? That's the actual flower, is the white. And please ignore my pet snake in there, <laughs> it's fake. So see, the red that's in there is a pseudo flower. That's not really the flower, that's actually part of a leaf. And then the white in the middle is the actual flower. But if you want them to bloom more profusely, you actually need to ignore them and not water them until they're pretty much wilting. And that will make them bloom more. And then you water them and say, okay, there, you're good. Now I'm gonna ignore you for another week. This is a Vitex lilac, which is going to grow into an ornamental tree. And I have three ornamental trees here in this area. By ornamental, I mean they're never going to get more than like six feet tall. But they are beautiful. They are flowering trees. And they're just really, really gorgeous. So as you can see, the Vitex is already coming back from the winter storm. And my chickens completely ignore it. Now we've got, I'll show you, I have a couple of baby Esperanzas. Unfortunately, I think one of my Esperanzas did freeze. So I did replace one, which made me really, really sad. But Esperanza is another plant that your chickens will love to eat. So I'm gonna let this guy get a head start, which is why I'm protecting it for now. But eventually it will grow. I mean, mine grew probably three feet tall in one season and they will actually provide a lot of shade. Another thing that's really nice about having plants in your chicken yard, whether it's hanging baskets or they're in pots or they're in the ground, is it starts to bring, not only is there shade for them, and the potential of maybe getting some nutritional benefit from eating the plants, but it also helps bring more bugs into the area. So you'll have a lot more bugs in the shade underneath plants that your chickens will eat. So it starts to just be this whole cycle of benefit once you have more plants in the area. I now have two sage in here. This is a Silverado sage. They're not completely evergreen, but they do keep their leaves on for the most part. I have two of these. It's another plant, as you can tell, my chickens just completely ignore it. And they have beautiful little purple blooms. They like to bloom right after a rain. So keep an eye out for the Silverado sage. I also really like having salvia. I have two kinds here. This is a Mystic Spires, which actually was blooming right after the winter storm. And then we had another freeze. But this one's coming back, as you can see. My chickens will eat this one, but it grows like a monster. It grows really big, really quickly. 
so it's a mystic spires salvia beautiful stacking tall blooms the other sal salvia that i have is the salvia greggy right there they come in all different colors from pink to white to purple that one is doing really well also and that one barely even noticed that there was a freeze which is great i have more espardanza over here and then i have a few different types of grape vines that are also sprouting um, grape vines your chickens will eat the grape leaves but of course as with all vines as it's growing upwards the plant will continue to thrive as long as you protect the root system and your chickens can't reach it anymore haha <laughs> So we'll get some shade, we'll get some vertical beauty here. There's my new grapevine that's right there that already already has grapes on it. But if the chickens eat some of the leaves off the bottom, it's not that big of a deal because they can't reach the majority of the plant. I will suggest that you keep the root system protected for a long while because remember that's the brain and the headquarters of the plant. So that's why you see anything that I can find as far as rocks, stones, little flower bed borders, all kinds of stuff to protect it. There is a golden thrallus right there. That is a deer resistant plant as well. So you can put it in your landscape and the animals hate it. It has beautiful little yellow blooms and it was thriving really well. You can see my videos about grazing boxes for your chickens. Just another option to give them some greenery, but that has cat grass growing in it. This is my fire bush that's coming back from the freeze. Fire bushes and Mexican honeysuckle and some of those other plants, they have really cool looking blooms. And I also love to have all different types of leaf shapes and leaf colors, just so we have some depth and some variation here in the chicken run. So their blooms are skinny little things that look like firecracker explosions or like fireworks. And they have a variegated leaf that's almost a reddish purple. They're really cool. So there's my fire bush. This is a type of variegated hibiscus. Hibiscus are great if you can keep the balance of, I want my chickens to get to eat some of it, but I don't want them to kill it because hibiscus leaves and flowers actually have calcium in them, which is great for your hens because it gives them strong eggshells. A lot of these plants also have nutritional benefits for us if we end up choosing to use hibiscus, for example, for tea or in your salad, it's a calcium benefit for us as well. One interesting thing I learned last year about this plant right here, which is another great superstar for zone eight, it's called a lantana, is that chickens sometimes they can tell by the shape of a leaf or by the feel of the leaf when they peck at it or rip a piece off that they just don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it looks. I just, I don't like it. So for me, and for my chickens, a lantana, which they come in all different colors. They are absolutely beautiful. I've got a baby one right there in a black pot. What you'll notice is that the lantana, if you touch one, their leaves are very rough. They feel like sandpaper. Not enough to cut you up or hurt you, but certainly enough that where the chickens feel it, they're like, oh, I don't like it. And so each of them will need to go over and rip a piece off and kind of see it for themselves. But then once this guy gets established, I will uncover it because it, it will be left alone. Likewise with my rosemary. Rosemary are awesome. They're another plant that is like, hey man, I'm not high maintenance. You can kind of ignore me for a while. And the rosemary is great because it's one of those fragrant herbs that can help deter everything from mice to spiders to flies, but the chickens hate it. My chickens have never messed with it. Now I've done videos in the past. You could see them in that plants and chickens playlist. Some flocks of other people they'll attest to my chickens won't eat mint or my chickens hate lavender and then other flocks it may be a little bit different so if you want test it out by getting one of those tiny little plants from the nursery and just leave it with your chickens and see what they do but rosemary also is interesting because there's a few different versions of it there's the typical rosemary bush that's like this and then there's also a crawling rosemary that stays lower to the ground so a few different options there I am so excited to show you my beautiful red bud. She is brand new. I just put her in the ground last week. This is a traveler red bud. It is another type of ornamental tree. So it's never going to get more than about six feet tall. And the post here in this chicken run is about nine or 10 feet tall. So we won't ever have a problem, even if we're here for years and years. But this one grows in a draping or weeping style. We have a stowaway. And the, the beautiful thing about red buds, there's two things I like. The first thing is that they have heart-shaped leaves, which I think is just so sweet. And the other is that as soon as the freeze is done and you are just clear of winter for the season, in zone eight, in the South Texas area, there are two types of ornamental trees that will start blooming really early. There's the mountain laurel, which I personally am gonna keep away from the chicken run because they're poisonous. 
and then there's the red bud and red buds she just finished her bloom but they have tiny little purple flowers and they are extremely fragrant they smell like kool-aid or like juice so they are just beautiful little flowers and it's just a gorgeous little reminder from nature that okay winter is over we made it now be ready for new life and color and everything is just wonderful so the last couple of plants i'll show you that are in here i have a bottle brush a little baby right there that's coming back from the freeze and bottle brush is another cool really thick shrub that will be a wonderful shade plant once it gets a little bit more established and the last you can see my little baby right there i have two of them here in the run it's called a mexican bush sage my kids call it the green bean plant because it looks like green beans and they say it smells like green beans i can't attest to the validity of that but it's another plant that grows really quickly it's super drought tolerant once you get it established and then it also has um, like some of the other sages and salvias it has long stacking blooms but that's another plant that my chickens will pretty much ignore but it'll grow really quickly even in zone eight and so then you will quickly have a plant that gets established that is big enough for your chickens to hide under and forage under and chill in the shade and it'll be great so really quickly just a few reminders if you're thinking about putting plants in with your chickens firstly kind of like I'm trying to show you in this shot you can always use depth to your advantage so you can have some plants that are actually in the ground then you can have other plants that are in pots so you have a little bit of height to them you can experiment with different kinds of vines and then you can also have hanging baskets so as you're looking across your run you get color at a whole bunch of different levels which is great and also remember if you want to have plants in your chicken run but you don't want the chickens to be able to eat them dealing with something like a small and ornamental tree and maybe a fruit tree and dealing with hanging baskets it'll also get you some of that color and depth that you love but the chickens can't eat your hard work so that's another good thing to remember if you're in zone six, seven, eight areas like that, where you're going to be dealing with hot summers, for us, for example, the summers are the problem. Winters, of course, just not pretending that we had the uh, winter storm here in 2021, but as a rule, our winters are very mild, but our summers are pretty intense. So you wanna give your plants some time to get established, to start getting their root systems down into the ground before you have the most extreme weather of the year. So depending on where you are, that may mean, well, I need to plant well before winter so my plants have a chance to protect themselves and get established before our severe winters. For us, it's summer. So here by the end of March, I am pretty much done putting stuff in the ground. I won't try to do it again until autumn, but autumn is actually the best time for us to plant. So we'll be doing some more of our flower beds and stuff once we get into the fall. Lastly, you're thinking about two different things when you're trying to protect your plants from the chickens just completely eating it. The first is the root system. My chickens, as soon as I get out my tiller, which is the tool that you can use to churn up the dirt, as soon as I carry my tiller over, my hens start going crazy because they know we're digging for worms. And they think that's that's exactly like that's why this big stupid human is coming over here because she's going to find worms for us so they want to dig in that freshly tilled dirt they want to play around and scratch up around where the roots are your chickens aren't trying to be destructive but they can kill a newly planted plant if you don't protect the root system so remember that's the headquarters of your plant so do what you need to do to protect the roots of the plant. But for a lot of plants, especially if you're not sure, do my chickens like this plant? Are they just gonna eat it? Are they gonna rip it apart? You might wanna put a cage around it as well. So in the example of this Esperanza that's here, I have the roots are protected because of the cage, but also the leaves are as well. You can use, this is just typical chicken wire. This is rabbit wire, which is a wider, type and then there's hardware cloth so you can look at you know you just don't want your chickens to be able to stick their heads in so something that's going to be smaller than your chickens heads so we have a whole bunch of different things going here but it's going to be wonderful as all of these plants get, get established our chickens will be able to find shade under them there's all of the different color there'll be a lot more bugs hanging around because of all of this vegetation and it's just beautiful to get to look at especially since your chickens tend to turn their run into like a dirt wasteland so i hope that this has been helpful i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm always looking for more plant ideas and always looking to learn so feel free to put questions and comments down and let us know what you've got in with your chickens thanks so much for watching